here we go again. I've got here the Wise Cam Pan Tilt version. A lot of people have asked, does the Pan Tilt version of the Wise Cam also work with the new RTSP firmware? The answer is, it should. Let's find out. Most of these steps are going to be exactly the same as what we did with the regular non pan tilt camera. This is the website where we're going to get the firmware under this how to set up RTSP and there's two versions. This is V2 is for the non pan tilt camera and this is the pan tilt version. We'll just throw this on the desktop. Now we're going to unzip it. This is the file we want demo pan RTSP. We're going to extract that also to the desktop. Might as well. Okay, here it is. Now we need to rename it just demo.bin, not demos with an S, which I've done on accident. Demo.bin. Now you need an SD card. So I've got one here we're going to plug in. Do I need to, I need to format it? Well, okay then. We're going to format it FAT32. Great. Volume label. We're going to call it uh, Wise with two Z's. <laughs> Pan tilt. Format complete. Excellent. Now all we have to do is toss demo.bin onto that SD card. You don't need etcher or burning it or any of that kind of stuff. Now we pop that out. Properly ejected, of course. Now back over here to the Wise Cam. I actually like the way that they've done this uh, power inlet on the rotating part of it down here. That's pretty cool to me. Because that means that's going to stay in the same place no matter which way the camera rotates. That's pretty nice. Um, it does take up a lot of the real estate here on the bottom. So getting to some of these things like the button, pressing that button is not very easy. Whatever. Try not to shoot it across the room. Okay, it's in. Perfect. It's a little tricky to try and hold this button and connect the power. The button is just so tiny. Press the button, turn on the power, LED is barely on, but it's orange, and now it just turned blue. So now I can let go of the button, and it should do its job for a little while. Wish you could tell that that's blue. There you go, it's blue. See? If you have trouble getting the light to turn blue, make sure it's FAT32, make sure the name of the file is correct, demo.bin, and then make sure you're holding down the button when you plug it in. Uh, and those are the three things that have to happen. If you're not getting a blue light after holding the button for a couple seconds, then uh, just try the process again. Th that's all you need to do. Those three things are all you need to do. So if it's not working, it's because one of those three things is wrong. Okay, now it turned orange. Hoping it starts blinking soon. Whoa, oh, lots of blinking. It's going to tell me it's ready to connect. I hope. Whoa. Okay, it didn't say ready to connect, but it's blinking like it's ready to connect. So let's go to the app. Okay, remember you need the Wise Beta. So you hit the three dots, add a product. We have a Wise Cam Pan. Yes, I already took the little plastic off and I already did that part. There's my... Wi-Fi password and now we're gonna scan this. I know that gives you guys my Wi-Fi password again. It hasn't said ready to connect yet. Ready to connect. Okay, I had to push the button twice for it to say ready to connect. Scan the code. QR code scanned. Please wait. Thank you. Light is still blinking. It's alternating between blue and yellow. Interesting. Setup completed. Okay. Setup completed. Setup successful, finish setup, and there it is. Now, wow, that's pretty smooth. I like that, that's nice controls. Okay, I like it, nice picture there. Okay, so now the next thing we have to do is set up the RTSP. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna go to advanced settings, scroll down. Our TSP off, we're going to turn it to on. We need to create a username and password for this camera. Demo password that I delete after the videos. Don't try no funny stuff. 
and then generate URL. There's that. Now, what I want to do is put it into Home Assistant. Another way to test the RTSP feed is to use VLC player. You can go to media, you can go to open network stream, put that URL in. You should be able to then put the password in. Let's see what it does. Yep, now it asks for the username and password. You have to spell it correctly, which means even if you spelled it wrong, you have to spell it wrong again. Beautiful. Oh, and you can see it does send sound over the RTSP. The delay is kind of crummy, but it's not bad. Okay, now let's put it in Motion Eye. So we're going to open up Home Assistant. One easy way to do it if you're using Motion Eye add camera, network camera. For me, the IP address was 56, live, and then my misspelled username. Now it's going to work. It's going to work perfectly. First time, every time. Oh, oh, progress, progress. Yes! Finally. Now let's do some modifications to make it a decent stream quality. And we're going to turn off motion detection for now. And we're going to change the name. Apply all that. Come on, baby. Yes. <laughs> there is a bit of a delay, isn't there? It's interesting that the Wise app is uh, more responsive. So you can see the delay the Wise app gets it. It's a few seconds behind there. But it is a way to get these cameras working in something like Home Assistant or something like uh, Motion Eye. Okay, so once you've got this here, the easy thing to do is to grab the snapshot URL and the streaming URL and make a camera in Home Assistant. So to put this in Home Assistant, you need to add something to the configuration.yaml. So open up your editor of choice. For me, that's VS Code. And then under your camera section, got a few things to add. I've seen people try and do this a couple different ways. The only way that I've been successful is by using the URLs from MotionEye. You should be able to just put the RTSP feed URL and get it to show up as a generic camera. I haven't been able to do that. Other people have. I've read about it, but I couldn't do it myself. If you do try and put in a generic camera, with just the RTSP feed URL in Home Assistant. It's going to require you to use a still image URL as well. The Wise Cam Beta firmware that puts out the RTSP feed doesn't provide a still image URL. So you'll have to just put null in quotes. But using MotionEye is just easier for me. Platform generic, give the camera a name. This is what will show up as your friendly name and it will also be the entity ID. I'm going to spell it right this time. That's better. Now we're going to copy the snapshot URL, this guy, and the streaming URL, and paste them into VS Code, just like that. Still image URL is the snapshot URL and mjpeg URL is the streaming URL. And that's all we need. This will get the Wise PT camera showing up in Home Assistant so that we can use it in Lovelace. So now we want to save that, go back to Home Assistant, and just like we always do, because we're very careful, we'll check the config, and, and if it passes, we restart. If it doesn't pass, we figure it out. And then we start. Great. One minute, 45 seconds later. It's back up, so let's check and see if it worked. We'll go to the States page. There it is. Yay! Woo! <laughs> a little bit of a delay, but there it is. So now we can uh, go to one of our views, like this camera view, and we can add another camera. We'll edit this. Configure UI, add a picture entity. Okay, entity, and then camera dot. Beautiful, there it is. 
Excellent. That is now a part of my camera page where I can see all my cameras. Happy day, happy day. Yay! Now it'll just freeze the image there, but anytime you click on it, it'll be live. Mostly. So that's it. A couple things to talk about with Wise RTSP firmware. The first one is probably this. Will this continue to be developed? No. They will fix bugs in this RTSP firmware, but they don't plan on making this the permanent firmware. So that's too bad. But it will still be available for those of us that want to use it. But the RTSP version of the firmware won't get a lot of the cool upgrades that WISE has planned for their cameras in the future. The other question I've had a lot has to do with getting the WISE cam outside of the United States. There are two rebranded versions of this camera, or other branded versions of this camera. NEOS is the one that's available in Europe, and at least in the past, Xiaomi had a version called the Defang. I don't know if these are still being made. The NEOS are still being made, but as far as I've heard, neither one of them is able to use the WISE RTSP firmware. That's too bad. If you're in Europe or somewhere else in the world and you can't get a WISE cam, but you can get NEOS or Xiaomi Defang cameras, you still can probably find a way to use RTSP by using this Xiaomi Defang Hacks firmware. I've tried it and I didn't have much success with it, but other people have. So before you give up, you might want to try this. Well, that's it. The Wisecam Pan Tilt with the RTSP firmware. I'm pretty happy with these Wisecams. It's pretty hard to find a better quality camera for this price. If you like this video and you want to see more, I've got a bunch. And I'm making new ones as often as I can. In addition to videos like this, I do live streams at least once a week on Sunday and sometimes during the week whenever I can squeeze it in. If you want to chat with me or with others who also enjoy these kinds of projects, check us out on Facebook and Discord. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.